Fun once again. Yeah, that's right, we're watching one of these things again. I, uh, Fable and I have enough time for it. For once. I, I, I'm being forced to... No, you're Mac not. won't stop actually trying to support me. And it, it's making me being forced to help it. I hate oh. it. It's evil. Guys, when I get more when I get more stuff about the game, I'm trying to create like the models and whatnot. I will show them off and make a video for you guys, and then we'll have Fable write some lore and maybe I'll speak the lines, you know, to say what you guys think, or to Christ. because I believe showing improvement in what we're doing is wonderful. But yeah, why are you crying? I don't know. I'm allowed to cry. You're no longer allowed to cry. Faye can't cry. That has now been banned. Actually, I do want to... I'm actually kind of upset over something incredibly dumb that happened at the local Walmart. Oh. Yeah, this dude literally got the last four... Um, literally, like, the last four uh, pre-made food things. Oh. And, I, and I just looked at him like... I was like, looked at him like, dude... Come on. You... Everybody, everybody, it's one or two. That was literally the last one. The Fritz wrong with you. Mm. I literally almost called him an ass butt. I'm not mm. even kidding. I looked mm. at him and I was about to call him that. Well, Out loud, too. Well, then. Even I, though... I hate it. Well, yeah. even through Fable's grocery garnishes, let's go on forward. I was hungry, man. Yes, I know. That ass butt took everything. Oh my god. Are you one of the many people who think that the TV show Supernatural mm. started its long and agonizing process of falling off wow. somewhere after season two? I've, the occasional I've only watched Supernatural like a single episode or two. I, I barely know what it's uh, about. Basically two brothers hunting monsters. It goes really heavy. A lot of people would agree that season one through five is essentially the golden age. Season six through uh, nine is where it kind of goes downhill, and the last few seasons is where it really, really goes downhill. God damn, that's a lot of seasons. Yeah, there's 15 seasons in total. Holy. Oh my god. Uh, anyway, moving forward. Genuinely interesting mm. and well-made gimmick episodes I mean, started to bleed in the idea of Supernatural is interesting. Fantastic tone of the show. And mm. the power creep oh, yeah, no, the it's really great. plot made the main characters sort of obsolete because mm. they were just two guys, so they had to keep pumping them up in increasingly unreasonable ways. Which well, yeah. ultimately just resulted in all the other alledgedly more powerful characters feeling a whole lot weaker. And ultimately the only yeah, way I the can show see that. could keep up interest was by doing oh. copious amounts of fan service. At the end of the day, turning the show what into I mean a by parody of itself. Did you get excited when in later seasons they suddenly uh. had a, a whole series of episodes where they refocused on their Monster of the Week format and they were really good. They were very cool because huh. the larger meta plot had sort of stalled and they needed episodes to fill. Do you then remember how two <laughs> no. archangels had a fist fight no. in a church? Because I remember. He's talking about season 14 and 15. Yes, they, <laughs> yes, my guy, I understand your pain. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do not care for it. It was all right. It sucked. It could have been better, but who the hell cares? Get over it. It's been, it's literally been like more than four years now. Just, just guys, freaking get over it, please. You, you sound very upset, and he sounds very upset. And I'm here, like I'm. A, I, you sound very angry, sir. <laughs> That's all. Just, just to, just to give you a little bit of content. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, basically, like I said, seasons ten through five. Uh, sorry. 10 through 15 kind of went downhill. A lot of the power scaling for literal archangels that we were led to believe in the earlier seasons were actually really powerful. But they literally took Michael, Lucifer, Gabriel, and um, what was the last one? Raphael? Uh, I literally forgot his name. They li Raphael. They literally took them and basically turned them into some of the most cheesiest uh, uh, things at the end of the season. And it's kind of mm. like a lot of people hated it because they're like, remember when Lucifer was actually a threat? And I'm just like, he was a threat? Okay, I'm just being rude, but yeah, he was literally a threat at one point. <laughs> oh, all right then. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Lucifer was supposed to be scary. I never found him as scary. I just found I just kind of found him really annoying. But that's just me. Hmm. I'm probably pissed I... off like ten Supernatural fans right there. Probably. All I can say is you're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Hello. Don't at me. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not in this. This isn't my dog fight. I'm literally sitting on the fence, just looking at the two dogs barking at each other. No, Matt's part of it. I'm not Pull part of this. In. <laughs> you can't pull make him in. Be rude to him. You can't make it. No, Matt. Matt's not a part of this. If you want to at me, go for it. But honest to God, he was boring. Accept it. Accept it. Anyway, continue. I remember seeing that. I remember the exact time and place for me, actually. It was four in the morning. And I was with my girlfriend at the time uh, in the airport of Palma de Mallorca because I, we were okay. just done visiting my abuela. And we wanted to catch oh, an early flight, so abuela. she dropped us off late in the evening, and then we just hung out there. I laughed the whole the whole fight. I was just laughing. Oh. I was, this it was too ridiculous. Like, I couldn't believe that this was the show Supernatural, and I stopped watching it after that. Anyway, Heart I mean, of the Reckoning sense. is if Supernatural had remained good. Remember when Azazel was like scary as shit? Yeah, that's this game. And look, if you did enjoy Supernatural till the end, this game is a lot more like the early seasons, but if you want to get into the kind See of shenanigans I mean? that they got yeah. into, World of Darkness is a very big and Every fan will place. say the same so thing. So you but... can go hog wild, I just recommend you don't. I mean, you can kind of do that if you get a. It's a TV show, so you can go a bit more stranger. Is that like you can suddenly get a holy sword and accidentally slam it through a werewolf's forehead? Yeah. 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 Just bear in mind that in this setting, humans are nowhere near on the same footing as anything supernatural. And regular humans is exactly what you are. Regular I mean, that makes humans, sense. I hear some of the Hunter veterans ask. And yes, in oh, Hunter 5, which uh, is Matt, not one the last fifth. thing. What? Just because I think it's really funny. Uh, in the Supernatural canon, like in the show's canon, okay. there's literally a book based off the two main characters. What? The book is literally called Supernatural. Yes! The brothers literally have an actual book series based on them called supernatural it is incredibly stupid and really funny well all right then moving forward i guess edition of hunter you do it's actually play joke, as dude. regular it's human hilarious. beings as opposed to the imbue okay play as regular human beings okay yeah you're regular humans in first edition imbue. Which anyone who doesn't know, uh, that's basically Humans Plus. We are going oh. to talk about the Imbued later. They've not been, like, stricken from the law. That's at least nice. They just have been moved out of the spotlight. But I think it's important to highlight mm. this departure from the origins of the franchise. The fifth edition of World of Darkness, as also seen in, like, Vampire and Werewolf uh, 5, really focuses on the small and gritty personal stories of low-level characters that are not too um, powerful within the larger context of I the I mean, world. that's completely As fine. I kind of like that. Much of the old lore has even become sort of apocryphal, which is a bit what? controversial among many fans for understandable reasons. I hold the opinion that for your game, for your chronicle, you can put into place whatever lore you like. There was always okay. a lot of it. It always contradicted itself. That was all on purpose. And actually, ah. the 20th edition, which is the 4th edition Don't of you mean the 20th Darkness, anniversary edition? ...did have a lot of books spread out Can across the various different... What? Uh, I don't trust game systems that are all the way into, like, 20th edition. It's not 20th that edition. I, I think he means that they had a 20th anniversary edition, where they redid a bunch of no, the books. No, I know, but... I know, but just in general, I don't trust game systems that have gone that far. It, it, it just legitimately scares me, and I can't explain why. Well, Fable has a weird faith, fear of books going over 20th editions, but we'll see later. It types of games within World of Darkness, like ironically. Like Call of Cthulhu, gave you it's already like, I think, in really folk 10th edition? Question mark? Maybe. Just on playing regular human beings who yeah. felt the, a strong conviction to fight monsters, as opposed to like, you know, superhumans picked out by 
mystical entity. Hunter the Vigil from Chronicles of Darkness, which is different from World of Darkness, okay. also had this premise. And I am 100% certain that when they had like the design planning meetings for this game, someone with authority walked into the room and was like, oh, uh, let me be clear. I want this game to be like the hit television show, Supernatural. Oh. So that is the premise that Hunter 5 is built on. And <laughs> I like it. Because especially in this game, you're basically entirely new to the supernatural world. And you're Which not even cool. like a monster. You're just a person. Constantly finding out new, like, occult lore and not knowing whether or not any yes, of Yes, like it the is fish people cool had a is war. a major aspect of the life of a young vampire. It's a huge challenge. And that is triply true for being a hunter. And well, yeah, that's because you have less pieces of knowledge to go off of. Like, in Vampire, you would have, like, the old blood being able to tell you here and there, even though if it might not be true. But with Vampire, or with Hunters, they don't know even less. The thing is, too, the mechanics that are in the book of the 50s, I mean, that's the whole they point allow of being you not a hunter, only to though, play is, at, with like, sometimes being a hunter, you literally experienced a event that for that kind of like forced you into this life like yeah forced you into the other side by a vampire or a were yeah a lot of the time hunters and stories become hunters because they lost a loved one or they had a they had an event that completely changed their life yeah true the powers of an imbued especially if you're willing to go back into older editions and like and port some stuff upgraded homebrew it if you could even call it that there is a temptation for every hunter to take every edge that they can get well, to yeah. go after the supernatural. You need so every edge, every advantage. Player, not your only option. Because you're not a 10 foot tall werewolf. Very much more interesting, but we're going to talk about all that later. We have to okay. cover the basics first. So let me be the first to say, if you would like to run a game of Hunter the Reckoning, and you feel that in order to do that, because it intersects with pretty much all of the other World of Darkness games, you need okay. to know pretty much all of the World of Darkness lore. Don't think that. Do not Good. think. Stop thinking that. <laughs> I encourage you to find out more. Of course, I have whole video primers that'll help you out with that. But if you were going to make up monsters mm. from whole cloth, or even just modify the way that certain monsters would work within the law in ways uh. that maybe contradict the established law, this would be the game where you do that. You can do it here. It's no problem. The actual I can see why. official Hunter 5 book is full of of monsters that very explicitly shirk the rules of regular examples of whatever supernatural being that they are supposed to be. And I, as a bit of a lore expert, can of course speculate about that, but really that's just because there's so much material to speculate with. Every aspect of the world of darkness is full of like exceptions and flukes and weird shit that you wouldn't expect. There's fairies on the moon and vampires that can uh, travel through time. The what? The idea of a weird jumping golem that can phase through walls has some sort of place in there. And well, so uh, is the reverse shape What the hell? Who has other people shapeshift into his appearance instead of the other way around. But what? neither you nor your players need to know what exactly that is. They just okay. need to figure out enough to know how to kill it. Really, that the is true. The out aspect is supposed to take up the majority of your game time. Okay. It's a game that really heavily leans on the mystery aspect of it all. Although, of course, like any World of Darkness game, it also very heavily features social dynamics. It's yeah, just that combat right. specifically only takes up a very small, very intense, very high stakes portion of it. Well, yeah, because, because you're humans. Of course, no matter how badass your characters are, you're not going to engage in a prolonged war of attrition with a monster. That's mm. just not going to happen. It'll destroy you. You need to find out as much about your quarry as possible, both mm -hmm. in terms of the law that surrounds it and how it fits into mortal society. Mm -hmm. Devise a trap and spring it. Your momentum comes from the element of surprise. You take down a quarry by striking hard when it's on its back foot. And yep, a lot of right. unexpected things can and will go wrong along the way. So figuring out how this particular monster works 
how we as a cell are interacting with it is a key Oh, it's called a cell, the, the group of Especially human if hunters. Especially the way that the monster works ends up surprising me. But not in the sense that it, oh, you all the research you did, actually it works completely different and it's useless and you're all dead. That's not what I mean. Thank God, I mean, no. When the way that it does end up working that we find out about is unexpected and innovate. Even if you are going to be running a very law accurate Hunter the Reckoning Chronicle and you're worried that their mm. knowledge of the World of Darkness is going to ruin your veteran players fun or that they will use that knowledge to like metagame themselves out of their own fun. First of all, play only with people who play their characters in good faith. But yeah. also, I would be able to identify a Niktuku as like a player if a good GM described it to me. And the hmm. fact that I would know that what is whatever that? level of danger what my is. character in Hunter thinks they are in, they are in way more danger than that. It would excite Whoa. me as a player. I would love yeah, it. And that's I why I like the new approach of World of Darkness 5. So sure, you're not going to fly guns blazing into I mean, the you can try. Vinoc aboard vietnam era assault helicopters but you are bullet. going to forge meaningful oh my connections God, I'm not a with other regular people that have been thrust to live this horrible life I mean, in the shadows yeah, you won't just care about the right a quest boy, he really wants he really wants to be the other type of werewolf that's weak to wolfsbane and i'm like that's babies what he is wolfsbane silver. wolfsbane is a it's a type of flower it's actually incredibly poisonous oh that i did not know huh Yes, in high doses, it's actually incredibly uh, poisonous. Well then. You will care about a community of people. And oh, of course, nice. even though hunters are just regular people, they are anything but ordinary. Every hunter True. has had some sort of encounter with the supernatural. Sometimes it's a single, powerful, traumatic experience. Other times That's it's what a I was long saying. and dramatic unfurling of events. And instead yeah, of faltering when wrong, they realized that what they were up against was something far beyond their wildest imagination, they stood firm and faced the darkness. Hunters are driven people they who look into the shadows. obsessed with the supernatural and would sacrifice almost anything to protect other people from it. Or rather, you know, how much they're willing to sacrifice really depends on the individual hunter. It's one of the main conflicts that most of the characters in this game are going to live through. But given that they yeah. are who they are and that they have chosen to lead the life that they lead, it's, it's a very dangerous probably life. probably gonna lead more toward everything. Hunters well, come in five distinct flavors, known okay. as creeds. These describe both their basic practical approach to the hunt but also double as sort of philosophical or ideological outlooks. Okay. Hunters identify I themselves and each other by their creeds, and hunters of the same creed will often prefer hanging out together because of shared outlooks. At the end of the day, though, they are all hunters first, and they recognize that for a lot of jobs, if you want to get them done, you need a certain diversity of thought. Do bear in mind that within each creed, though certain archetypes of skill sets and character traits are more common, you're going to mm. find all manner of people from all walks of life with all types of abilities. I mean, that's because they're people. Right. I have strange abilities that Fable doesn't know about, and he has strange abilities that I don't know about. It's, it's literally just playing as people with sometimes who gain strange abilities or magical objects. Quite literally supernatural, but anyway. Their creed informs their motivations, but it's not a character class. Mechanically, it's less like a clan from Vampire and more like an affiliation from Mage. And as with both, you mm. get to play against type and are in fact encouraged to. Okay. Underground hunters are those who occupy the liminal spaces of society where the rules don't even apply all that much anyway. The scenes oh. and milieus that are not really part of respectable society. In other words, they are poor and marginalized people, and from among those ranks, often, quite frankly, criminals. Look, you ah. might be a bully boy. For yeah, me. that sounds about right. Underground people are usually involved in criminal actions and then dealing with the supernatural. The, the things that goes on to the shelves would probably mix with that really easily.
for the local racketeering biker club, but you know that there's some shit out there in the night. And whatever semblance of morals you do have does include actually doing a little something for your protection money, which is mm. protecting the people you collect it from from shit that the regular law enforcement is certainly not going to. Monsters or can't. lurking in the shadows. And this is really just because from among the poor and the marginalized, Criminals are the ones who are most likely to encounter the supernatural and it, feel as though they can do something about it. I mean, I can could see that. also be a militant political radical. I mean, they, they quite literally are outside the law, so they feel like they can do something outside the law. It makes perfect sense, honestly. Radical who e. defends immigrant communities. You could even be a disgruntled cop who moonlights as a vigilante. The underground creed says that the system is not enough, and the rules imposed by society are hindrances to the hunt and uh. must be ignored. There is no shame in stooping to the level of the monsters. This is a case of oh. self-defense, asymmetrical warfare uh. against powers way beyond our comprehension. Stooping to their level might be a bit every much. every tool at your disposal. Manage your resources wisely and strike whenever you can get away with it. And if you need to work with thugs and cartels to do it, you do it. Those are useful people in the war against monsters. I would they always are... rather have a bunch of gangbangers pumping caps with tech nines into a werewolf the not have <laughs> subterfuge and guerrilla tactics are the underground creed's greatest weapon they're not going to pick any fights that they can't win that is oh. pointless but they are going to take every opportunity to weaken the monster even if it's just financially hurting its resources wrecking its shit if i just thought of an interesting idea for an underground hunter which would be a vietnam vet that still has psd flashbacks and does not trust the government whatsoever that works. Yeah. Basically, he still kept his gun, his equipment, and everything, and still set up for the monsters that he Nothing sees in else. the dark. It sends a powerful message. Do not fuck with us. When those yeah. arrogant monsters then invariably do continue to fuck with us, they will make a mistake. They and always we can do. exploit that mistake. Underground creed hunters tend to be callous and pragmatic, creative and paranoid. Their moral codes are certain to bring friction mm. into any cell they're a part of. And often, yeah. let's be serious, that is because the only reason they're not called monsters is because the things they are hunting are actual are monsters. Worse than they are. Yeah. Monster hunters are soldiers in the war oh. against the predations of the supernatural. Their worldview is simple, clear cut, good and bad. And if you're not on the side of fighting the monsters, you might as well be on theirs. They're not oh. just content with hitting monsters wherever they can. They want results, conclusions, an end hmm. to their quarry. As such, they Sounds will sometimes pick fights that they do not have a great chance of winning if there is a good chance that it will eliminate the quarry. And Basically, they're chaotic good in a way. Look, anyone who's played vampire will be able to... Well, not chaotic good, but lawful good in that they see everything as black and white. ...that for most of the clans that you can pick, being a fledgling vampire who gets into a fist fight with a mortal human who just so happens to be Green Beret... <laughs> it's not gonna be a fun time. He yeah. might not end up killing you, but he will give you a whooping you <laughs> will not so soon forget. <laughs> but as a hunter, picking a fight in a low intel tactical environment you cannot be sure, and in fact, you can almost be sure of the inverse, that the mm. fight you're entering is going to be even remotely evenly matched. Luckily for yeah. the Marshall Creed, they do tend to be the best at fighting, whether it be down in the ditches, running logistics, or implementing plans. Most yeah. have military or law enforcement backgrounds. Okay, so Some this might work for the other Vietnam guy, but that's not the one I want to actually play in. Uh, and Hunter the Reckoning. ...that they got disillusioned with because they were too focused on enforcing some sort of political agenda instead of hunting monsters. But that oh. is far from exclusive. A physically meek cybersecurity expert might massively expand the martial tactical portfolio. Ah, so they're a big range. As might a charismatic marketer who can mobilize allies and resources. 
Part of knowing how to fight and win is knowing how to stack the odds in your favor. Even yeah. though, of course, no plan survives contact with the enemy, you do want to design a hit where you can go in, go out, clean off. And yes, mm -hmm. for that, you need as many guns as you can get, but also as much knowledge as you can get. Contrary to stereotype, no. marshals are very no. much willing to put in the time to do their research. Wars are, after all, one with intelligence as yeah. much as they are one with manpower. What they Always do tend put to have a problem with is moral ambiguity. They oh, yeah, like that makes collaborating sense. collaborating with supernatural beings, even if it might give them an advantage. Okay. Because, I mean, after all, who knows more about vampires than a vampire, right? Mm. But the only reason that vampire yeah. is telling you any of that is because they have an agenda. And if you follow their advice, you are making them stronger somehow. If, yeah, that this might be the creed of my hunter, but we'll see. You know, in fan, if most there's one a bit better that fits him, we'll see. Rice about entering an alliance like that. But the thing about the supernatural is that it is not always clear. Black cut. and white. Ghouls yeah. serve vampires, but not always because they really necessarily want to. And m most of them, maybe not most of them, but many of them certainly can be redeemed. And maybe they're mm. trying to get to that somehow. Many of the magical arts are rather helpful, but also connected to dark powers. There's True. witches out in the bayou and wide-eyed doctors with strange machinery in the city that can suture wounds in a matter of minutes and heal them, too. Certainly good after hmm. a hunt, but what kind of curses does that witch cast? And what kind of crazy experiments does that scientist get up to when he's not busy suturing? Marshals hmm. tend to be distrustful of people like that, and quite frankly, Bas usually rightly so. Right basically, up they're basically distrustful of people on the supernatural side because they're more on the moral gray area and pretty much everyone on the darker side Until of things. Until the point where that is no longer the mm -hmm. case, and they mm -hmm. just killed a witch that spent most of her days protecting people from evil spirits. Or a mad scientist mm. who was trying to cure children of cancer that regular medicine had given up on. Inquisitive no. hunters are possessed with a morbid curiosity about the hidden world of supernatural Okay, this might actually be me. <laughs> that they found out is there, and they need to know as much about it as possible. And boy, is there a lot to know. Let's not yeah. mince words. Uh, the hunter society would collapse if it wasn't for inquisitive creed hunters. Yeah. Few jobs have libraries of need... terms as vast and as mired in false information. And in no job are know. the stakes higher, so you better not get it wrong. You know how hard it is to obtain information as a supernatural creature. It becomes immeasurably more difficult if you're a human stumbling around in the dark. So there's yeah. nothing more useful than having someone along for the ride who does have a grasp of what is what and can separate the facts from the deadly bullshit. Problem is mm. that while, yes, certainly, the main reason that these people are hunters is to hunt. And the reason they collect all this knowledge is first and foremost to keep people safe. That doesn't yeah. mean those are the only reasons. Let's oh. face it, there's not many rewards to being a hunter. It's a <laughs> That's path true. you work on because of a conviction that is so strong, it's almost compelling. It's but quite literally is a dirty job that someone has got to do. You don't exactly yeah. want to do it, but you got to. That doesn't mean you don't want nice things when they're right in front of you. And the deeper you dig into the supernatural, the more you find out that there's actually a lot of power in it. Power you'd never even have thought possible. And I mean, yeah. let's face it, as a hunter, you probably weren't looking for the white picket fence anyway. Not to mention <laughs> a lot of this power would legitimately help you on the hunt. Temptation is a constant companion to this creed of hunters above all others and though they are invaluable to any cell they are a part of they are also the most likely to compromise an operation if it means significantly expanding their knowledge and for Sounds the best right. reasons really objectively in the grand scheme of things letting this monster get away is going to give us so much information that we can use to actually save people mm. in the long run that's literal life save if we let this happen. And isn't saving people the part of the sentence that comes Pretty first? Pretty Most commonly, much. inquisitive hunters spring from the halls of academia, where maybe they found some sort of occult text at the university library, decided to look into it on a whim, and discovered much more than they bargained for. But yeah. Any hunter that believes Everyone always that gets more knowledge than they is the strongest for here. weapon against the encroaching darkness 
can be a part of this creed. Like a private investigator trying to find a larger pattern or even a social butterfly who likes to understand people on a deep and meaningful level. There's a few hunters who view inquisitors mm. with a degree of suspicion, Makes usually sense. entirely unfounded. They are as committed to the hunt as anyone. They just see the hunt as more than just this quarry and the next. And quite frankly, for all the expertise they have gathered, hunters are still the only people who will listen to what they have to say. Basically, yeah. Just know that the various creatures oh. described in the scriptures of their religion are more than just allegory. And among those who believe, they know that they are the ones who must go toe to toe with them. Some of them see this as an exalted confirmation of. Their okay, so this actually be, might be my hunter. I'll be honest. <laughs> Because I think he's going to find so a much. holy sword. Why is it fable? There's so much time. I'm yeah, dying. <laughs> Yo, Leo, just try and get through the video, fable. We're learning so much. We're learning too much. We need to split it up into three parts and never release the third part. <laughs> Why? That's what some people do, I swear. I don't actually think they do that, but I'm going to make it a thing. It's the new Twitch meta. You're welcome. Oh. Well, listen, if you guys like this video and get it to 100, we'll watch the mag the one about the, uh, what is it, the face sooner rather than later. <laughs> They're not going to get it to 100, no. I'm dying. <laughs> well, if you guys somehow do, you know what to do, so, um, yeah. I believe. They are happy to take up the Don't mantle die. of the paladin against the force. Yeah, this is definitely Alice mine. I would have preferred to remain in the dark and not be aware of the fiends like the rest of the flock. It's yeah. messed up how confirmation of the things you previously had to take on faith can be a heavier burden than the doubts you had to carry before. It's right? like the saying of there are two ideas in the uh, in the universe: either we are alone or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. Especially yeah. if the doubts are not entirely eliminated. No one religion or worldview has mm. a monopoly on producing faithful hunters. There's faithful hunters of all belief systems, and many of them mm. do actually have abilities that rival those of the monsters. That huh. are genuinely supernatural. The power of true faith has existed in pretty much every version of of the world of darkness and though it is not explicitly available as a mechanic okay. within the rules it is possible to make it within the framework oh, that you are given you can sense monsters repel monsters harm monsters with the it's definitely not magic we're uh, definitely faith. using the and power of my faith, faith isn't fable. just limited to one belief okay. system either a voodoo mm. ritual can banish demons just as effectively as a Catholic exorcism. As a result, mm. you have a creed of hunters who are often, but not always, quite extreme in their various contradictory religious beliefs. Finding I mean, common ground in the <laughs> of protecting the same I mean, confirming that your faith is real and God is literally on your side, it's kind of hard to deter someone from that when they are literally smiting a vampire. Also. As long as it's not from super, as long as it's not the god from supernatural, I think we're fine. Yeah, I don't think it's the god from supernatural. Can oh, thank get God. Heated among the faithful, and other hunters oh, are often annoyed God. as shit at their constant proselytizing. If indeed that is what they do, you, you don't have. If you want to play this type of character, you don't have to be preaching all the time. Sometimes they are outright suspicious mm. that these people would manifest. Abilities comparable to the kind of stuff that those deeply religious reality benders with the particularly pernicious cults that they build around mm. themselves can make happen also. This isn't to say that all faithful have access to their own set of supernatural abilities. Or hey, Mac, I'll be right back. I gotta go work. help my family with something, but keep watching the video. Do it. Oh, dear so, God. Fable's leaving me alone so, to learn about my creed. These awful people. I he, he steals my I spaghetti. Have my headphones. Oh my god, I can still hear it. I just can't talk to him. Well, he'll uh, still be here technically. Other creeds, it's just that they are more likely to have access to those kinds of artifacts, secret knowledge, I want a holy or spiritual sword. fortitude. The faith Maybe was... made by Charlemagne, or by uh, the Blade Durandal, or the Blade. There was a blade called Cortana, which I don't remember who had it. 
or the Blade of St. George the Dragon Slayer. I know a lot of these. Listen, I like magical knights. Don't blame me. Steadfastness in the face of supernatural darkness is a huge boon to mm. any cell, regardless Especially of whether knights. it also comes with some sort of superhuman trapping. They often mm. have access to various kinds of fringe communities with very useful and very unique perspectives on various monsters. They are, mm. on the other hand, often also quite eccentric and have to follow all manner of uh, sometimes problematic rules. Maybe I they need to offer one. some sort of redemption to the creatures that they're calling their quarry, and only if they spurn that redemption can they be destroyed. Maybe hmm. they will dismiss certain entirely valid sources of intel because it comes from a practitioner of a religion that they consider evil. Like but witches. at the end of the day, clearly, yeah, whatever it is they believe in seems to be on their side more often than not. Entrepreneurial yeah. hunters oh, are not dear. satisfied with simple solutions when it comes to the hunt. They okay, see how does this work? Everywhere, and they will take any chance they can get to obtain an advantage over the monsters. In okay. their minds, the way hunting is done, the very hunter society itself is sleeping on a lot of ways in which the hunt could be made safer, easier, and more effective. As oh. such, the entrepreneurial creed includes a lot of inventors and creatives coming up with all sort of gadgets and knickknacks. Oh. As useful as though it might certainly be once it is fully developed, Usually you have to field test it. it it's difficult <laughs> to create yeah. like a proper lab environment to really get the full numbers on the incinerating A to 2000. <laughs> and on the hunt, doing that, setting up those parameters might give the quarry an opportunity to escape or even yeah. worse, turn the tide. But think of the rewards if we could develop this machine Just and distribute it gadgets. among hunters. Hunters of this creed can often seem like their main goal is not so much the pursuit of the hunt as the pursuit of their business mindset. And it can be difficult yeah. to see that this grind set really exists primarily in pursuit of the hunt. Especially because a lot of entrepreneurials specialize in being fixers, managing the logistics oh. of their cells, manipulating quarries with economic warfare. But when the chips are down, they are often not the ones whose ass is on the line to test uh, this new <laughs> technology or approach that they're trying terrible. to implement. And when it doesn't work, they're also often not the ones who have to pay the price either. Oh. From an out-of-game perspective, a lot of people actually take issue with this creed, and it does certainly feel like yeah. the most taped together of them all. Mad scientists yeah. and business people usually don't really have all that. Yeah, I, that they makes could, me they confused. They could have separated these out into two different creeds and God knows why they didn't do that. But design-wise, it is important to remember that creeds are not the same as character classes. Mm. And bringing an unusual approach to the hunt is something that these two concepts do have in common. As well as a potential desire and overlap to, like, make money off of dealing with the supernatural. Which is not a terrible idea because hunters do have certain employment problems. Yeah. <laughs> they don't just keep weird hours and strange schedules of traveling long distances on a whim. They also, like, a lot of the shit they do mm. is just illegal and they could be in yeah. jail or prison at any time. The Winchesters used place. to live off credit card fraud. Like, I... Wait, really? I, people forget that this was the case. They had one episode where they highlighted this and then just nothing so having someone who can take care of that side of things in a legal way is really going to do a lot to keep the team operational and if someone Sounds goes right. out of their way to hire a monster hunting corporation it makes doing the job a whole lot less thankless it yeah. might have to show up as a consultancy firm with an <laughs> ambiguous name in the government it's basically like you have your own ghostbusters team <laughs> records when the city manager hires the cell to root out some Wendigo problem. But it's money, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what the Creed seems to be about mostly ideologically. Yeah. But when you look at the mechanics, it seems to be primarily about coming up with technology and gadgets and stuff. The which is weird. Of which should also be like obvious. It's a common trope to have like someone who tinkers on the team. But it is something yeah. they could have added to the Inquisitive Creeds or maybe one of the others. Which ultimately Yeah, I feel like it's more inquisitive. People who go, look, I'm not particularly athletic, good at shooting or researching the occult, but I am good at making money. And so I'm going to do that and then give you that money and then keep, keep the doing your thing. able to save lives, which is yeah. immensely useful, of course, but yeah. also kind of boring to play for a lot of people. So it, yeah. it really 
doesn't make much sense to dedicate an entire creed to it. So from an in-universe yeah, perspective, we just weird. have to sort of accept that Hunter society yeah. just evolved this way. And given the overlap that does exist, and, you know, if we choose to see it from the right angle, Back. we can get to see it, though, Good right? You, I just wanted to tell you, since I'm still, I was still listening, basically, one of the episodes of uh, Supernatural, at least in the beginning, the brothers, since they didn't have jobs, they mostly would always have to, like, swindle people out of money by playing pool. Oh. So, yeah, it is a thing. A lot of hunters don't have jobs at the show, so a lot of the time they got money through one way or the other. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, World of Darkness games oh, tend to be less about me. plot and more about the social landscape that the characters inhabit. The yeah. culture and relationships, the conflict and intrigue, the path to fulfillment in the context of one's society are central themes. Hunter is different in that it is still very much about those things, but it is a little more plot focused. It has a pretty clearly delineated mission format, which is not something that other World of Darkness games usually have. But of course, all of that happens within the context of Hunter society, which crucially isn't as hmm. formalized as the various societies we know from the supernatural kinds of games. Okay. Hunters organize themselves into cells, groups of people that work together to take down a quarry and then move on to the next. Cells can and do look very different from each other. They include people with all manner of creeds and they see themselves as having all manner of particular purposes I and have a particular set of skills. They do. It could be two brothers riding across the US of A in a muscle a supernatural. car and occasionally aided in their exploits by their not really but kind of actually uncle. And in mm. the best of days, other people they know from a roadside inn. It could be a programmer, an athlete on the regional swimming team, a pizza oh. delivery driver, and a subway mechanic, all teaming up to hunt monsters in the greater I Paris just, metro. I just want to say, how dare he call Bobby their uncle? He was their father figure. He was a, he was a better father than their actual dad. Oh my god, you're get, you're, you said get over it, and now you're getting into it. He's not, he knows I'm not wrong. Area. It could be an unusual family centered around a surprisingly athletic and deeply insane grandpa <laughs> zip around Norfolk, UK in a decommissioned school bus. It could be a oh. group of political- Oh, he, did he just make a reference? I think he just did make a reference to Hunter the Parenting. ...extremists in the Philippines who realize that actually the corrupt politicians mm. aren't even the greatest problem. Oh. It's the monsters they're in bed with that are sucking this country dry. Probably like a third oh. of the whole Hunter 5 book is about stuff that's happening in the Philippines, which I don't know why, why but I'm here for it. It's cool. <laughs> Working is strange. together is essential if you want to fight monsters. And oh, yeah. hunters know other hunters outside of their cells, especially if they cover the same geographical area and are of the same creed. Hmm. If you run in the same circles, eventually you're going to be able to recognize people in the lifestyle. That's just how it works. Okay. However, all of these are loose social networks, never really codified institutional organizations. At least not where the real hunters do their work. Because oh. there's plenty of more organized hunter groups called orgs. They're just not really in it for the hunt. Real oh, yeah. hunters call them jobbers. They what? usually well trained, well equipped, backed by big resources. The problem yeah. is that while hunting monsters is certainly part of their agenda, it's never the main part of their what agenda. What is and usually the main part? that means that they are bad. Okay, so I yeah. think we need to take a step back here, and I'm going to do my thing where I do like very poor vampire analogies that don't really translate all that well but okay. I like keep going with them until they really run into the ground apart. but I still pretend like they make sense and they kind of do so in vampire kind of the default thing that we're a part of as player characters is the camarilla the main sort yeah. of government body of I wonder if he's Vampire's talking about the men of letters maybe there's just hunter orgs, but they're usually not good people from what he's telling me. Yeah, that's definitely the British men of letters, because technically they were supposed to be an organization that knew about monsters, knew how to hunt them, but their methods were very, very messed up. In the sense that if you don't join them, they will in fact kill you because you are a loose end that they cannot handle. 
Well, then, uh, that's not good. And it yeah. makes me think of some of the organizations from Hellboy. Except for, like, the main one. Has an enemy group, which is the Sabbat, right? In Mage, yeah. kind of, we're part of the traditions, which is sort of the Sabbat to the greater actual real government of mages of the technocracy bear in mind that these organizations are in no way comparable it's okay. just that from the narrative point of view we oh, okay. are the underdog major organization that defines itself in opposition to the governmentally defined one in hunter the player characters are to put it in vampire terms anarchs independent oh. operators they yeah. don't really want anything to do with either of the major sects and just want to carve their own path in life and though they do tend to know each other and be able to even rely on each other's support in times of crisis, mm -hmm. they have no interest in creating some sort of codified formal society. Much ah. like the Anarchs, they tend to be extremely hypocritical and self-righteous about all that shit. They're a fu- I mean, yeah, that does seem about right of independent types hunters. of hunter orgs, and this is no accident because they are indeed Dark mirrors to the five hunter creeds. Okay. Dark mirror in this case really meaning that there's barely any difference between them at all, and the the main clear delineation is the ephemeral game term quality of drive. That is I just basically think that they're the nth end, the ultimate like deepest part and darkest part of each of the creeds. Is the thing that distinguishes regular jobber hunters from capital H hunters. The game book is actually written in a way where it, it's it's really just extremely self-righteous about this shit. Mm. Uh, where things that the orgs do, if the player characters would do them, they're fine because they're doing them for the right reasons. Which okay. is like a very clever way of writing it because it like illustrates the irony of some of the self-righteous modes of thinking that you have to engage in in order to really be part of that anarch culture the okay. mental gymnastics they do to separate themselves from people that they're 99 percent identical with i mean it, at least at least i hope it's written that way in order to illustrate this sort of irony i maybe i'm just giving the media literacy too much credit with a society effective though they may be hunter orgs are institutions and institutions inherently cannot be about the hunt and the hunt alone they always hmm. represent the interests of whoever is funding them and as such that sounds about right be trusted to do the right thing which isn't to say that hunters won't work with them sometimes or that hunters always do the right thing and the game really is about diving into the moral friction that happens here oh the yeah the chronicle the will confront you with a lot of ethical conundrums and one of the main ones is will we work with this organization and enjoy the benefits of doing so and do we risk the stabbing in the back that may well follow yes there is always no possible. god it is the bed of letters what it is oh. the men of letters like i said all i can think of is that group and that really bad remake of uh Oh, is it Hellboy? Protection, even? But ultimately, there's always a reason why they're coming to you, an independent cell of hunters with whatever it is that they're coming to you with. And that mm. reason may well be, oh, we're, they're a little short-staffed, uh, they know about this monster that's, like, somewhat outside their wheelhouse, and so they're passing the intel along because they really want the danger to be banished. But it may it also be that they don't know what they're dealing with, and they would like to find out. Or, maybe even worse, they know exactly what they're dealing with, and they want a bunch of independents to, like, take the Car damage, train. the casualties, and probably even the fall yeah. that inevitably goes wrong. Then they can swoop in, take down a weakened quarry, and take all the credit for doing so. All the while you bore the brunt of the attack, if you are still alive at all. It's dangerous to work with orgs, but unfortunately it's often also worth it, or simply necessary. Sometimes, and you never yeah. really quite know what the case is. I'm going to show you I one like example it. org of each of the because they're all morally great out there, how they work, what they do, all that. Uh, but bear in mind that these are five categories, and the orgs that operate within whatever area that you're running they the can game in change their names, maybe very different ones. And there's always going to be more than just five of them, obviously. So I really encourage you to come up with your own ideas for this. They don't need to be completely fleshed out at the beginning of the game. Just look into what's there, what you okay. can come up with, and come up with it. 
The Arcanum is a semi-secret society of wealthy gentlemen oh. scholars seeking to understand the various facets and truths cool. and aspects of the supernatural world. As an academic type org, the Dark ah, Mirror or Inquisitors. the Inquisitive Creed, yeah, that's this what I pursuit of knowledge is their primary goal. Although they do support hunters and have a few people who engage in the hunt themselves, they would pretty much always let the quarry escape if it meant they would be learning something new and useful. This is mm. actually one of the major points of contention within the organization because yeah. they were originally founded as a sort of like one of those political lodges in Victorian London seeking to acquire mystical power. But eventually oh. they figured out that there's a lot of dangerous shit out there and they were like, should we should we be like doing something about all this? They, yes. We have we know things. We could help with this. Article 4 of the Arcanum syllabus explicitly forbids this line of thinking because what? the organization does not pass judgment upon the supernatural. It's not within their bellywick to moralize. They simply observe. That is only that is... the Lord de jour, though, because even senior leadership is engaged yeah. in all kinds of efforts to protect. That is incredibly stupid. You can't just observe when things like that happen. You have to do something. Lies. Like, lies from me or lies from them? Both. Oh my Take god. humanity from monsters. Not all of which are particularly happy that the Arcanum is trying to learn all their secrets. Yeah. Vampires in particular have grown increasingly aware of their presence and have over the years destroyed quite a bit of their infrastructure. A lot of valuable books and artifacts. Killed some staff too, but they, you know, they're just staff, so who gives a shit? So the Arcanum <laughs> is pretty strict on exercising Article 4 when it comes to the Kindred, but everyone else is kind of fair game. Except I mean, that makes sense because vampires are super sneaky and even have human agents, so yeah. Except when still they secretly meddle with vampire shit, because how well, could they resist? Well, of course the they do. expertise is mages and magic, and many ah. members of the Arcanum are actually quite skilled at practicing the arts of sorcery. Unbeknownst to them, mainly the Hermetics, but also to a lesser extent, the ah. Foresters and Aetherites, use the Arcanum in an effort to shape consensus to be oh. more conducive to their particular kinds of magic because oh, the arcane no. ultimately is funded by like very fucking old money coming <laughs> from very fucking old families who were like the <laughs> primary beneficiaries of to be themselves and are thus embedded in academic institutions all over the world with many of their members actually publishing in legitimate and respectable journals as a hunter having someone from the arcanum in your rolodex is in value mm, they have chapter true. houses all over the world with vast libraries of supernatural secrets and though officially they're not supposed to share it because that was sort of the power base of the organization in victorian london yeah. there's been a strong push to make all of that knowledge more accessible to the public and as a hunter you get special it's, access anyway but do be aware sense. that you will be owing a favor to someone who is very rich and very powerful and very yeah. curious and whatever dark law you bring back home to them you have no idea who they'll pass it on to it's basically dealing with the inquisition fable in a way <laughs> basically they have all this information that they might give you but they also might not they're taking it Either way. The Mortician's Army oh no, that's is a the Spanish Inquisition. Oh my god. militant group working to free Minnesota of the vampire No one ever expects them. Oh my god, we're not going into this joke. <laughs> we're not. Too late, we did it. I did it. You can't <laughs> stop me. Oh my god. Anyway. The Mortician's Army is a highly militant group working to free Minnesota of the Vampire Menace Minnesota. and all those who would collaborate with the Vampire Menace. Makes As a sense. vigilante org, the dark mirror <laughs> to the underground... It's just strange. Minnesota of all places. We need to tell Rykoi that apparently he's in danger in Minnesota. He's right. I think he's from Minnesota. He knows what this is about. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> so he knows what this is about. Oh my god. Ruthless in their pursuit of their goals. They're completely and ruthless. At nothing, including making He's vampire fine. collaborators disappear at the slightest notion of suspicion. And if your luck is yeah. poor, just 
being out after dark, looking kind of goth <laughs> with your neck exposed <laughs> is collaborator behavior. Oh, so they didn't no. put a vigilante org into the Hunter 5 rulebook, even though it's listed as an org type that orgs can be from. So I had to lift this one off, uh, like, uh, oh. of Darkness Fiction. You could say that Revenge is a, a vigilante orc. That's in the book. But it is listed as a corporate orc in the book. And also, I kind of choose to ignore its existence because somebody really should have told the writers that, uh, that personal data isn't that valuable. The cost yeah. of having someone drive out to a grieving family to make them all install an app on their phone is going to be bigger than whatever amount of data you manage to scrub off those phones in like a, a whole lifetime. And especially because they're a family and the data is very clustered up, that's kind of diminishing returns at some point. Yeah. No one's trying to fucking spy on the family of Bob and Jane Peterson living in the Midwest. It's just that you're not gonna make any money off of having their data. In any case, True. the Mortician's Army, which is what we're actually talking about, uh, they banded together originally as a, actually different cells of hunters in that area oh. who really wanted to pool resources to deal with the vampire menace after some particularly horrific incidents had occurred. But because vampires live in secrecy, ultimately what happened is that most of the energy of that militia, most of the momentum, the motivation that they had, mm. and the resources that they had pulled was sort of, uh, uh, shall we say, wasted on uh, running impromptu trials for, like, vampire thralls. They would, like, oh. threaten people to hand over resources that they needed or be branded a collaborator. Imagine oh, you no. own a gun shop and, like, a bunch of preppers come in with a weird logo on their fucking... Right, it's a militia, and they, like, give us all the ammunition you have so we can hunt vampires. <laughs> and if you don't do that, we will turn your house into Swiss cheese because we know where you live. Which oh, is what God. happens with vigilante groups. Their fervor ultimately mainly manifests in, like, imposing social control on their community. Yeah. Granted, the Mortician's army was able to deal a massive blow to the local Camarilla once they had a foot in the door. But not before their leader, like, sacrificed his own daughter. What? And, like, got killed by her in turn. And not before a bunch of completely innocent people got killed in a conflict that they really had nothing to do with. God. They had no awareness of the supernatural. Basically, and they're quite literally will do anything in order to cut down the vampire menace. It's easy or for hunters to get dragged into this kind of thing. In a way, all they do is vigilantism. It's just that that's not really a field where there's a lot of laws governing it. And the idea yeah. of actually getting something done can be very appealing. The obvious yeah. group is a high-tech boutique contract. Like, I can understand wanting to get something done. The problem is, if you don't go about the right way, especially with the supernatural, a lot of innocent people are going to get hurt. Oh my god, it won't end. All this information won't end, man. Oh my god, calm down. The Orpheus group is a oh. high-tech boutique contractor that has mastered the technology of being able to put people under in a mm. way that allows them to become ghosts and manifest in the shadow land. Huh. And then also being like getting them back from like having died essentially. That's they get the that's pretty crucial. As a corporate org, the dark mirror of the entrepreneurial creed they have found a uh. niche in the world of the supernatural that they can exploit for monetary gain. Really? And they're doing it. Which is a hell of a lot better than most corporate orgs, which are often just protection rackets. And which often Sounds do pose right. a particular danger to hunters because, well, hunters are doing something for free that these oh. corporations could be doing for a profit. People yeah. have been killed for less. Orpheus yeah. originally started as a cryogenics company, but... After a series of uh, long, very unethical experiments, they became capable of dealing with hauntings. Usually they will do this for rich clients, they will drive out to wherever they're needed, they will set up like their, the death pods that they have, which are like electronic sarcophagi basically, full of medical equipment, and then they will send their operatives as ghostly apparitions across the gauntlet into the upper layers of the underworld. Mm. Sometimes if they feel like they can get a lot of valuable information out of a job, they will do the work pro bono. But given ah. that Orpheus is actually quite a small operation, they don't do that very often. Unofficially, they also take up contracts for espionage, 
which is corporate only at this point because it seems as though and this is not entirely clear that the the nsa also has access uh, to certain aspects of their technology as well that's and not, in a strike of that's crazy risk and technological sophistication they also assassinate people what they don't do it very often so it's fine i guess and yes this is i the guess Orpheus from the world of darkness game line orpheus which is like the successor to the wraith the oblivion thing which is not even really a success it's a spin-off that delves into the ruins of what happened in wraith after the avatar storm officially mm. at least they have a whole video on wraith the oblivion the ghosts the oh we have one right society. here you can check that out and unlike in the official orpheus continuity in the h5 continuity the orpheus mm. group you know exists it wasn't destroyed annihilated blown up that's like good. it was at the end of the Orpheus game line. The big problem is, of course, that they are mostly after money. And as with the one time where they mm. let like a dozen or so death row inmates die in their pods because they were just sort of fucking around. They what? didn't know exactly what they were doing. <laughs> what the turning those guys into vengeful spirits that ended up haunting the company. Or, you oh know, my the god. Literal hit jobs that they do. They're gonna do some pretty unethical shit in pursuit of profit. And that's exactly well, at least you're having fun, Fable. What? Uh? At least you're having fun with the Orpheus group exactly over here. What hunters need to be mindful. Not really. Not I hate are they them. at the end of the day expendable assets, the expending oh, of which would be much better to the bottom line. It's also to them very appealing to be able to make money off hunting monsters. Certainly mm. easier than having a day job that distracts you from hunting or living in fucking squalor. And when you find out that what you do can actually be quite lucrative, you yeah. might encounter a certain misalignment of your priorities. And if you want to prevent yeah. a misalignment of my priorities, you should consider be becoming one of the many people who already have chosen to support me with small amounts of, or sometimes large amounts of money, let's be fair, on yeah. Patreon. This new way of I making do have videos a Patreon that I think too. I've been Thank on you. for like a year now you is... You know, in the uh, Supernatural show, there was this, um, there's this lady who would always steal artifacts and stuff because she could make a lot of money off of it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly hunting, but she essentially would steal stuff from rich people or or monsters to sell to other people because it got her a lot of money. That, that sounds so, about right. There's always these kind of people. If there's money to be made, you know there's someone trying to make money off of it. Yeah, essentially she did that. Then she died, and no one missed her. I'm not surprised. Labor I'm not even kidding. We never do, talked about our, our to, after that episode. The overall mm. runtime is longer. If you want to help me keep doing what I'm doing, uh, patreoncom Creek, There is a link down in the I'll description. Let's you give me start your the Patreon right now. <laughs> I can't give you my Patreon, Fable. It's literally only. I want some... his Patreon. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. We're going to move forward. Show. The Society of Leopold is the Vatican's elite strike oh. force against all things vampire. Cool. And also various other kinds of supernatural beings. They have a broad portfolio, but they're very laser focused on vampires. It's always the Vatican that always has this kind of group. Never any other Christian organization, really. The Vatican has done some shady stuff in the past. I know, that was more when they were being controlled by, like, aristocrats and whatnot, unfortunately, at one point. But yeah, the reason usually why is because there's an air of mystery to it, and the Vatican has been around for a very, very, very long time. All I'm saying. Is that their religious prick, my dude? Oh my god the dark mirror of the faithful creed they are not just equipped with supernatural knowledge and artifacts of holiness but also the certainty of the ontological rightness of their actions uh. as all those who are put in their path are put in their path because they are agents of the antichrist the society of mm. leopold is ancient and if you're a vampire player you may have heard of it the original foundation or rather the groundwork that was laid into what would eventually became their formal foundation as an institution within the vatican in the middle ages huh. was ironically laid by the elder vampire fabrizio ulfila who oh. was one of the few ventru who managed to attain and maintain a position of great influence and power with 
within the Catholic Church. And he was like, what if there was mobs of armed militants that <laughs> fight my enemies? That is exactly what happened. And uh, also more than, than that. But that. I feel like he kind of accidentally made the organization he shouldn't have. Was one of the things that happened to right. a certain extent. But also mm. more things than they did more. They It was more than just the enemies. Ulfila yeah. is still around, by the way. He's like almost 2,000 years old now. He's a Methuselah in anything but like generation. Except uh. he's just, instead of, he used to be basically the prince of all of Lombardy. Nothing, the prince of Milan, I should say. Nothing in Lombardy would happen without his knowledge. Now he's just some guy at the Giovanni court in Venice. Although uh. one of the key figures within the Society of Leopold in the Hunter Five source book is has the surname Ophila, so I who knows if that's an Easter egg or maybe a sign of greater things to come. The Leopoldites have access to all kinds of faith based magic and techno magical gadgets. That Not also to makes the sense. The fact that they maintain a tight of highly trained hunter. I mean, of course, they have highly trained hunter, it's the Vatican. Hunters equipped with bespoke body armor made specifically to protect them from the kinds of shit. That monsters will do to them. Because yeah. most of the body armor you can buy at the body armor store is <laughs> like warfare kind of environment. Yeah. Of course, the enemy soldiers in Afghanistan are not going to bite your neck. And that's not where they have guns. They operate all over the globe. And thanks to the vast information networks of the Catholic Church, they are at home pretty much anywhere. They call yeah, the, vampire the church is literally everywhere. You can pretty much go to any country, almost any country, and probably find a Catholic church. Tracking and killing efforts worldwide. Providing training and intelligence to various agencies, but never so much that they themselves can be displaced. Because, of yeah. course, being the religious orb that they are, their main purpose is to kill monsters in line with the doctrines of Catholicism and to advance the interests of Catholicism. To bring monster hunting glory to yeah. the church. And only the church. No mm. matter who else was involved. Which is why when the Society of Leopold gets in touch with you, or really any other, like, Catholic society, they probably are a front for the Leopoldites at that point. Mm. They probably have a reason why they don't want to send their highly trained and devoted elite strike force that have, like, access... You know what I just realized, Fable? In most uh, things, they usually have all the, like catholic or christian denominations working together which considering it is vampires i can kind of see why you know yeah. monsters in the dark because while we might have different ideas on how christ or if he's really the son of god or what if he's really a spirit or whatnot uh it's mostly the idea of well there's vampires we should probably deal with that first create a gas that has oh, similar effects vampires. on vampires as sunlight because they they have that they oh. think that all of that is going to be less useful to be thrown at the fight against whatever they're throwing you at than like you mm. a mm. team of ragtag independent hunters do you feel what i'm getting at here the fbi Kinda. special affairs oh, division boy. is a department within the U.S. government's domestic intelligence and law enforcement apparatus that deals with cases that cannot be easily explained. Basically, they're quite literally deep state, is what I'm thinking. They deal with those kind of stuff. Through the means of Things criminology. As night. a government org, the Dark Mirror of the Martial Creed, they get to operate with impunity under the law and can execute ops the way that they think is appropriate and without having to deal with all of the legal ramifications that hunters have to worry about. Yeah. These are the classic G-men, the mirror shades guys in suits. And as you might suspect, if you know a little bit about World of Darkness lore in general, mm -hmm. yes, the New World Order had a hand in creating them. But oh. really as a catalyst to the meme of the mirror shades agent, so that would become part of consensus and they would be better able to work their magic. And also as an excellent recruiting ground, though they have mm. access to the entirety of the US surveillance apparatus and yeah. the hypermilitarized police force, they actually strike relatively rarely. For really? organization with their level of funding, I mean, the absolute numbers are still high. SAD well, of course. agents are attached to various weird-looking cases in various government departments all across the United mm. States. So they see a lot and often have vast networks of informants to, like, pass intel from and receive 
Intel that too. makes sense. They, They're that, a government it, org. It's the other way around than what I said. They are engaged in a constant information war, an info war, if you will, with uh, and this is re this is really quite oh. embarrassing. Uh, it, with uh, other parts of the U.S. government <laughs> also investigate supernatural things. Like the military's information uh -oh. awareness office, the new kid on the block with Pentagon-level funding. There's a lot of jurisdiction friction, oh and that really is where most of their labor goes into. Just yeah, that actually is a problem in the U.S. jurisdiction. Uh, funny enough, Fable, the, the Air mm -hmm. Force and the Navy had uh, kind of bit of fighting over what their new plane was going to be because they didn't want to share with each other. Not the Navy. And the Air Force. Jockeying for power within, like, the government. I'm more worried and about the Trying to get out. Why? I don't know. Access to Black Ops slush fund money. And you know, mm. sometimes the easiest way to get that is to take out someone who's a political opponent of someone who controls Look. that kind of cash. Uh, you know, flesh and blood, not even a monster, just a guy. <laughs> Which is hell? really the problem. A lot of monsters <laughs> get away because of red tape or because interagency shenanigans interfere oh, with the God. operation. In many such situations, the SAD will uh, contact teams of freelance hunters and deploy them in a way that allows them to still claim the credit. But think about this, right? Why would the US government pay a bunch of insurgents in possession of illegal firearms <laughs> to perform an extrajudicial killing of someone who presumably pays taxes. <laughs> and vampires pay taxes. Wait, what? They, they, they're smarter than Al Capone. What could <laughs> you possibly do that the US government can't? Sure, they're handing out get-out-of-jail-free cards like they're made of paper, but given that they're trying to maintain a low profile as a yeah. department, how sure are you that those are worth the paper they're printed on? And if you are ever in a situation where they can feel like they can do their thing and they look at you as though you are meddling because you're just doing your job as a hunter, do you really want mm. one of those people to, to point at you and say, I, I know that guy. I know their first name, their last name, their middle name, yeah. I know their date of birth, their private home address, their social security number. I kind of don't want them around. I worked with that guy before. Now I can hear a lot of you asking, but hang on, Bert, second what inquisition. about the Second Inquisition? Actually, probably What is the Second Inquisition? You're just assuming that the Society of Leopold is the Second oh, Inquisition. Yeah. But, aha, that is incorrect. Yeah. I mean, it's not entirely wrong either, to be fair. It's just that there's a bigger picture here, and that bigger picture is... There is no such thing as the Second Inquisition. That's what? right, the Second Inquisition isn't really a term that anyone involved with the Second Inquisition really identifies with. What? They may never even have heard that being said. Because it's a term made up by vampires to oh. describe what they feel like is an organization or group of organizations of mortals that form a unified faction to try to eradicate them. They lived mm. through the First Inquisition, but much like the First Inquisition was also, it's not so much one organization, it's a, more of a movement, a phenomenon. And ah. sometimes a federation, because the, many of the various organizations involved in the effort to exterminate vampires do collaborate, does not often go super easy. All of the aforementioned orgs are part of the Second Inquisition. Well, maybe okay. not all oh, because all they're of Metiers ghosts. But all the okay. other ones, they have they have some level of involvement with what they call the Second Inquisition. Even you, freelance mm -hmm. hunter going uh, uh, after vampires right now, are probably going to be labeled member of the Second Inquisition by those vampires. <laughs> the bulk of Basically, it's just a broad term because they don't actually know the names of these orgs, so they just all call them the same thing and think they're under the same umbrella, really. The army is actually like the special forces and intelligence services of the various countries, all those three-letter glowy organizations, often relying on support and coordination from the Society of Leopold. And they all have very different approaches and philosophies. The Boas Cavadas commandos in mm -hmm. Brazil are extremely fucking brutal oh. in squeezing their civilian populations. And the absolute global elite when it comes to urban warfare. The British uh. SO-13 is extremely bellicose and will oh. always go in Brown with overwhelming force Super to destroy natural. as many vampires as possible. Girl. And they are pretty much always happy to sacrifice any kind of valuable intel to exterminate yes. with extreme prejudice. The eighth direct. Oh, great. 
direction of Russia's Gru intelligence service is uh, they rely on like magic, Christian Orthodox sorcery, and they also keep a bunch of high generation vampires on what? tap in like secret uh, dark government facilities in order to uh, turn their best operatives into thin bloods. So what? in a way, thin bloods are bringing about the extermination of vampire kind. What and the that hell? really is one of the main conflicts of any good hunter chronicle. Because hunters exist in that liminal space where they are regular humans with a lot of knowledge about the supernatural. And many okay. of them will seek to attain more of that power themselves in order to become more effective as hunters. At least this is okay. what they will tell that makes themselves. Sense. And the supernatural isn't just plain evil. There's a lot of very good stuff. It's gray. In. The line is very different for every individual hunter, and this might create major conflict and rifts within your group. So yeah, we've reached that part of the video. Uh, and the first and fable. main thing I'm going to talk about yeah, is, ironically, one of those things that uh, hunters really have no reliable way of becoming themselves, but also the thing mm. that Hunter the Reckoning used to be all about. The imbue. Okay. Okay. Imbued are what Hunter the Reckoning used to be all about. Regular human beings until in a moment of sublime clarity they had an experience of complete true sight. Glancing what? behind the manufactured reality of the real world and beholding ah. the truth of the supernatural. From that moment on they become obsessed with hunting the monsters that exist in the night. Not entirely unlike the hunter hunters of the new hunter but crucially mm. imbued and not just regular people to whom something happened but regular people who were chosen by enigmatic entities known as messengers oh which then proceed okay. to communicate with them sometimes more sometimes mm. less somewhat sporadically in various cryptic ways breaking into so... your spam emails might contain crucial information so it's like eldritch gods are reaching out to the them the flickering light confused. by the dumpster behind the petrol station spells oh, Morse code. Oh, An authoritative God, voice God. resonating inside your head speaks a single crucial word of advice or warning. Random bits of conversation you pick up out of context suddenly make sense when you put them all together. As you can imagine, uh, the imbued are quite insane, like beyond just the fact that they can divine information knowable only to them. Their mind is like more laser focused on the hunt than anyone. They are, mm. in fact, supernaturally obsessed with it. And though oh. they are ultimately still mortal, they are imbued with certain Powers. supernatural abilities. Okay. And which abilities those are really depends on what messenger was in touch with them and what creed they are a part of. At least this is what the... So this is what creeds used to be. And okay. OG Hunter the Reckoning, and now creeds are some different, but they used to be this. Now, it must be said that the messengers are some of the most enigmatic entities in all of World of Darkness. There appear uh, to be three of them, and each of those is a master of three particular creeds. But some say that there are actually nine distinct messengers. What? Others say there's really just one messenger that gives different imbued, different creeds that are socially constructed <coughs> into larger categories. Okay, that's even more confusing, I will say that. What the heck? I don't even... Based Calm down. On some sort of cosmic scheme. Others no, say that that is true, except the one messenger that exists is no. actually a, like a thousand messengers that exist in sort of a hive mind. They may be angels, uh, they may be eastern gods, they may be some sort of rogue or not so know. rogue project of the technocracy or the traditions. They may be whatever the fuck is in the sarcophagi oh. guarded by the Talmay Ra. It's really anyone's guess. Each of the creeds okay. has its own spread of supernatural abilities known as edges. This, there's also edges uh, now in Hunter, and they mean some different oh, than what they used to, but it's kind of like a similar narrative space. And these are the edges that they have an inborn talent for, but they can, in theory, learn the edges of other Hunter creeds. As I've said before, you can pretty much build most of okay. these powers if you understand how they work in the framework that is given to you in Hunter 5. Some of them you can't, some of them you might prefer to run more like the old fashioned uh, way and okay. because the versions of pretty much all World of Darkness games are very cross compatible, you can homebrew mm. that up from the last edition. The virtue of mercy is embodied by imbued receipt. Virtue of mercy, huh? Let's see, mercy. It is their primary mission to save people from monsters 
more so than destroying the monsters themselves. I mean, that's a pretty good virtue. And then, of course, the easiest way of saving people from monsters is Let's to do destroy it. those monsters. Yeah. Merciful imbued will never be willing to sacrifice innocent lives to achieve this goal. They will, okay. in fact, even as they are hunting their quarry, often try to find ways of redeeming it, whether that oh. be making it turn mm. into an innocuous human form, or if that is impossible, at least give it the opportunity to achieve mm -hmm. some sort of metaphysical redemption. The yeah, immune of the West. innocent creed are pure and noble souls whose existence is all about healing rifts between humans and the supernatural, ensuring that there is peace insofar as that is possible at all. I Some of them are outright pacifists, exclusively seeking dialogue and understanding. I kind of doubt that could happen with some of the vampires. Using their powers to protect mortals and thwart the efforts of monsters without necessarily killing them. With their mm. edges, they can calm down the most tense of situations, make potential victims mm. imperceptible to monsters, divine cool. hidden information, and Ooh. control light. That's a major theme for wow. them, even in ways that imbues light with additional magical properties that what drive the away all manner of supernatural. The imbued of the Martyr Creed are self-sacrificial warriors who seek redemption for some yeah. type of darkness that they feel is within themselves. By taking the bullet, sense. claw, or spell instead of the people they're trying to protect. They will always be the first to jump into the breach when there is danger, and they'll uh. always be happy to sacrifice if it means reducing someone else's suffering. In this, Sounds they right. too are not even necessarily here to kill, but to be killed instead of the people they're oh. trying to save. Their edges are very powerful, but always come with some sort of grave personal cost. Mm. They can become formidable warriors that terrify even hardened monsters. Understand oh. those monsters at a fundamental level so they can predict their next moves. Absorb harm inflicted on others onto themselves. Ooh. And even strip supernatural beings of their abilities. The imbued of the Redeemer Creed are on a quest to eradicate supernatural beings by unmaking them entirely, oh. saving those of them that can be saved, which they will go to great lengths to identify. They understand that many monsters are not necessarily monsters by choice, but that it is oh, often okay. a condition imposed upon them with little say. And though many of them cannot be healed necessarily, they can mm. be helped to see the error of their ways, and in many cases, granted a painless death. Their edges yeah. revolve mostly around holding up a mirror to monsters, drawing out the hidden humanity within them, often by yeah, inducing that's... immense guilt and shame, and understanding their true intentions, not just their monstrous intentions, but the synthesis of the person and the beast. This they... reminds me of actually something from uh, 40k with Karn the Betrayer, but we won't talk about that. It can also help regulate harm caused by the occasional outburst in a relapse, and even suppress many of their supernatural flaws. The virtue of vision is embodied by imbued who have an eye for the big picture. That the hunt is a process with goals, and that decisions need to be made in alignment with those goals, yeah. instead of getting lost in the day-to-day -day of killing monsters. The virtue of vision is okay. embodied by imbued who have an eye for the big picture. That the hunt is a process with goals, and that decisions need to be made in alignment with those goals, instead okay. of getting lost in the day-to-day -day of killing monsters. In the world of it's today, which is defined people, almost definitely. entirely by a ceaseless hunt with no end in sight, only one of their creeds is actually particularly common among imbued. The oh. other two are sort of too monumental and weird to produce <laughs> viable hunters most of the time. But given that this virtue okay. is about thinking in the long term, who knows oh. what kind of roles they have that might become important one day, or okay. have been important in the past. The imbued of the Hermit Creed are Hermit. tuned into the voices of the messengers. Oh no, it's Fable. He's in the Hermit Creed. He's a hermit crab. Yeah. Than any other. Damn, we still that done. I want to stream, man. Oh my god. The occasional cryptic message, they hear game. the constant chatter of Angel Radio in the back of their minds with oh. overwhelming clarity. And that is just too much for most people. Hence why hermits tend to retreat from human civilization and 
go to some kind of place that limits all kinds of stimuli to the minimum amount possible. To survive okay. the deafening chatter in the comfort of some, like, soundproof... Basically, added. they hear angels all the time in their head. That must be, uh... With white walls. Crazy. Like a chair, maybe. Their edges are built around either channeling the voices of the messengers, which tend to contain very useful information, or astrally projecting outside of their places of comfort to communicate with other hunters when they need to. Which okay. is really the only time that other creeds get to interact with the elusive hermits. The imbued Makes of sense. the visionary creed are the leaders, directors, and logisticians of the hunter world. Capable of gleaning mm. the consequences of the unpredictable and knowing which oh. pieces need to come together for the puzzle to fit. They are Weird. the compass needle that keeps hunters of all creeds moving forward in the right direction instead of them just like scuffling off in various different places to follow <laughs> their own particular obsessions. Helping them conserve their energies and lean into the wind only when that would actually accomplish something. Their mm. edges give them abilities to divine information about the past, the present, and the future, allowing them to act accordingly, but also okay. supernaturally regroup and recharge other imbued in times of need. Weird. The imbued of the Wayward Creed are cursed with a vision of the world entirely without monsters. Because at huh. the same time, they have that overlaid with a constant sharp sense of where monsters are in the vicinity and where they can find more. Generally oh, that's horrifying. The creeds for their bloodlust, Wayward hunters are very effective solo artists. So having no. one on your team can be very useful if you really want to kill the quarry no matter the cost. They, their edges revolve they seem mostly like they'd be around insane. detecting monsters and sensing their abilities Ooh. as well as What? They are insane. As inciting a berserker-like bloodlust in other imbued that override oh. whatever it is that they believe in even the precepts of their creed. Some of them can also, like, control the uh, air and read the minds of the dead, which... What the hell? I don't know what that <laughs> is about, but it is a thing. <laughs> the virtue of zeal makes up what some might call the actual, real, true warriors okay. among hunters. Those whose purpose is to explicitly fight monsters with a vast array of tactics and weapons mm and never without thought. There are okay. some of them who are quite arrogant about being the only true, actual, real warriors that oh actually really fight. Okay. They're the only ones who are really hunters. He's dragging really it on, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, God. Calm down, Fable. He knows I want to go, but he's dragging it on with these words. I don't think he is, Fable. I just think you're freaking out. If the creeds serve an important purpose in the hunt, and the messengers came up with all of those, so there must be a reason why they exist. <laughs> the imbued of the Avenger Creed are driven with Ooh. a desire for vengeance against every monster who has ever harmed a human being, which ultimately um, does tend to be most of them. They yeah. just don't strike as indiscriminately as certain other creeds. They put out oh. the fire where it's burning. Their purpose is to be the sword that drives that fear explains into why the they hearts look like of a sword. all those monsters who would dare give in to their weaker natures and attack humanity. They eliminate cool. threats and their edges really make them into a predator that hunts other predators. Giving yeah, them the, the apex ability predator. to track prey while avoiding detection, take a beating and also do immense damage. The coolest cool. thing probably is that they can like conjure spiritual weapons out of thin air. The imbued of the Defender Creed are the ah. inverse of that, focusing the on protecting their team and humanity. Be this loved ones or people who just happened to run into the crossfire from the dangers of the supernatural using martial means. They will ah. try to avoid taking unnecessary risks and make sure that other hunters don't take unnecessary risks either because they understand that one dead hunter today mm. means a lot fewer people saved in the future. On the other hand, yeah, collateral that's true. damage is fewer people saved right now, so they try to avoid that as well. Their edges are almost entirely defensive, or at least Makes like sense. very close range. Allowing them to lock down areas against supernatural intrusion, draw the attention of monsters upon themselves, and 
withstand mm. immense amounts of physical harm. The imbued of the Judge Creed Ooh, seek to evaluate cool. monsters based on their actions and their innate character, and ensure that they get what they deserve, which mm. is not always necessarily destruction. Some of them see themselves as the stick to the carrot of the Redeemer Creed. While others simply hmm. think of themselves as the only ones among the They're judge, jury, and executioner, technically. ...on monsters that is not, like, clouded by some sort of compulsions to see monsters in a certain light. Their edges help them in this by allowing them to detect lies and discern truth, which are two different things. Hmm. Find supernatural creatures in place, and, and this is a wild one, they can create sort of contracts oh. with them that if they do a certain thing, they will be immediately magically punished for it. Oh. And that punishment need not be that they are destroyed. It often isn't. Now, cool. the imbued are, if you choose to play them, uh, somewhat morally simple compared to many of the other edges yeah. that hunters can have. They are, after all, divine monster hunters appointed by some sort of greater set of beings that, though sometimes a bit radical in their worldview, are not as inherently compromised mm. as many of the other options. Pretty much all the types of supernatural beings that hunters classify as monsters also have the ability to give those hunters gifts that will make them more effective as hunters. And I'm not cool. just talking about the information sharing harem, although that is definitely what? very useful. The knowledge that the supernatural beings living in the world of darkness have about the supernatural beings living in the world of darkness is generally pretty spotty, but also a hell of a lot better than what most hunters know. When it comes yeah. to gathering intelligence, of course, no one is more useful than ghosts. Wraiths True. know things. And they can they always find do. out things in ways that no other supernatural being can. All without Ooh. ever being seen. And all they want is to feel alive again. So, oh, I mean, what's possessed? the problem with giving them a ride every once in a while? Certainly uh, they wouldn't have some sort of ulterior motive agenda that they might uh, pursue in the world of human beings during the... Well, Fable sounds like a ghost right now. I feel like one. Oh my few god. hours that they have of feeling alive. It's not like there is a complex bureaucratic government in wherever the fuck it is ghosts live. There <laughs> is though, and I, you know, I, there's, I posted the video here earlier in the sidebar about Wraith the Oblivion. Check okay. it out! But you know what will make you into like a real beast of a hunter? Becoming a vampire's ghoul. Seriously, uh. ghouls may not be vampires, but they are certainly a good cut above humans in terms of their abilities and physical. Physicality. They can learn weaker versions of the various disciplines that their dermators have access to. So in addition to just being more physically formidable thanks to the vitae coursing through your veins, you might also mm. have access to some of that potent super strength or that celerity super speed. The incredible senses of all specs or a hunter that can knows how to obfuscate? Oh. How useful would that be to just be undetectable. Not to mention you stop aging and you heal uh, faster too. Oh. I mean of course you will also become devoted to the vampire whose blood Yeah. Vibe. It's basically a and narcotic. If you keep your powers and your age, you're going to have to be imbibing a whole lot more of it. But you're getting yeah. it from someone who's trustworthy, right? You're getting it from Maybe. someone who you like. Someone you feel more and more loyal to each day. And it's oh. really now that you're thinking about it, uh, after all this time, it's really rather strange that you were reluctant to enter this agreement in the first place. It's He's so clearly him. mutually beneficial. You are so much better a hunter for it. And sometimes no. the vampire even feeds you intel. And so you don't hunt them. You maybe hunt people that they see as their enemies. Because, I mean, they're clearly the better person uh, among the vampires. Those other people are more dangerous. And if other hunters were to try to hunt that vampire, you might try to discourage them because it would be mm, a no. stupid idea to turn an ally of the hunt into a quarry. And hey, look, if they become too insistent, you might need to protect your ally, an ally to the hunt, from oh, those misguided no. hunters. And before you know it, you are that vampire's personal warhound, a highly trained killer, loyal to them, and only to them. Vampires yeah. are deceptive creatures by nature. They yeah. take the long view of things. So They're on the long a decade con. or two to turn a hunter into a dedicated ghoul is really just going to produce a weapon that is all the more honed for it. A good ghoul mm -hmm. is worth the investment. Of course, 
most hunters are reluctant to do things like that. It, they yeah. know it's a dangerous path. There are a lot of less dangerous options as well. You may yeah. have been born kinane, a kinane, human with some degree of fairy blood running through you. Oh, veins. that looks fable could be kinane. Kinane or no, changelings and beings deeper in the hierarchy of fairy might have a manner of blessings and boons to bestow. At the start stream, buddy. Oh my god. And some How mean can you be, Fable? Not even wanting to be here. Sniff. I do want to be here, but this this is a lot too much information. Listen, just be a Fayborn or whatever. certainly do this out of the kindness of their hearts. Aww. Many love humanity. And every once in a while, you might have to uh, refresh them on their steady supply of Garmin Bozia, but you barely uh -huh. know what the fuck that even is. What is that? So what's the harm in it? They might even take it from you. And if you're lucky, that'll come as a bout of great inspiration. Might even drive you to hunt someone in particular. Maybe oh, someone no. they don't like. Werewolves have kinfolk, which you also would need to be born as, uh, and oh. many of them also are capable of enchanting you in ways that'll make you more powerful. In general, mm. though, it, it's it's probably better to like just stay away from werewolves. Really, they oh. they don't even hunt them. They're fucking dangerous. <laughs> you should be scared of them. Also, like being kin. Also, uh, apparently, fable. Uh, werewolves are apparently humans' apex predator. Folk comes with all manner of like responsibilities Aww. that you don't want. It's really it's yeah. Apparently, thing. something called the delirium goes over a human if they see a werewolf in their war form and they see crazy stuff. Whole thing. It's much more convenient if your character is just someone who naturally has psychic powers, which are actually surprisingly common. They're oh. just like. Psychic powers that are based just in the fact that they are psychic powers. That's a supernatural source that they come from. It's just that in those people who have them, they're usually very weak and underdeveloped because, like, what are you, what are you gonna do? Go to fucking telekinesis yeah. school? But certain yeah. humans have such innate talents that can read from, like, thought reading to becoming invisible. There's people who can do remote viewing. There's people mm. who can talk to ghosts just as easily as they can talk to the living. There are okay. some who can drain other people's energy. Boy, oh. boy, don't we know some of those. Some oh. can, like interface mentally with electronic devices even teleportation is in the car wow and of course there is mages or rather the knowledge that mages have being reality benders mages are as varied as they come and while mm. many of them will be happy to help you directly uh, something that's even more valuable because it doesn't bind you to them as much uh. is learning the sorcerer's secrets of their various magical paradigms oh no i've explained sorcery before and you should also check out my whole video yeah, there's on another one ascension but basically what it boils down to is that sorcery is a limited form of magic that anyone can learn that has a lot fewer potential applications for its power, hmm. but also comes with the benefit that it doesn't generate paradox. I've used the oh. analogy of learning to play one song on the piano instead of learning to play the piano. It's magic oh. for the unawakened, and it has like hundreds of thousands, probably even different uh, traditions of it that have been like ingrained through continued practice by various mages into reality. I'd probably take and the werewolf the for that. And many sorcerous arts actually are quite powerful. Basically every form of like arcane or folkloric witchcraft from like putting down tarot cards, voodoo healing, sometimes like prayer mm. to manifest things, everything that you can think of is there if you can unlock its secrets. Oh. And mages are usually the ones who have those secrets. Yeah. And much like certain types of magic, sorcery can be about technology as well. The oh. Orpheus group with like their ghost caskets that <laughs> allow you to be sort of dead and astrally project, that is technically sorcery. Or rather to like put it in technocratic terms, they are extraordinary citizens in a qualified sense. Speaking mm. of the technology, I am a con <laughs> what about the technology? Private citizen. Yeah. Oh. What? Excuse me, what about it though? Yes. Hunters are mortal humans confronted with the supernatural, interacting with the supernatural, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Which the technocracy obviously doesn't like because the technocracy doesn't want humans to be aware of the supernatural. It's oh. Against the consensus that they're trying to build. They also see it as their job to protect regular humans 
from the supernatural and hunters being regular humans, hmm. you think that the technocracy would do everything in its power to make sure that they don't do their thing. Yeah. I don't know exactly what I'm talking about. That's okay. I'll try to express it. Oh, it's mage like lore. They also have a two-hour video on the technocracy. Oh, they, we're eventually going to have to go through that. It's a big subject matter in the world of Dark. Uh -oh. So first of all, the uh -oh. technocracy... Uh-oh. 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 I thought you wanted the Fey video at some point. Uh-oh. Oh they my give god. Up. You give up. You can't give up, Fable. All powerful. It engages it can, in a you're on your own, That's really <laughs> most of what it does. Yes, it is their job to eliminate monsters that threaten humanity. By definition, through the anthropic principle of narrative play, hmm. the monsters that hunters are hunting are the ones that slip the net of the technocracy. And, yeah. you know, let's be serious. The net is pretty wide meshed because the material it is made out of is mm. very expensive. The technocracy is using that net to fight Cthulhu. Oh. That is what they had. That's their. Oh, topic. um, so okay. So for the purposes of terra norming, it is less than ideal that there are normal human people who are aware of the supernatural and engage with it all the time. Strengthening those particular mm -hmm. beliefs. They also slip the net, but it's a different net from a different direction. A different Much net, like yeah. all of the humans that come into contact with all manner of supernatural creatures and are drawn into their societies. And, uh, I mean, uh, you know, better it be than a hunter, than a ghoul. The technocracy yeah. knows that there are certain types of beings, such as vampires and werewolves, fairies, ghosts, that kind of thing, whose existence they simply cannot prevent because it is anchored in external reality. They have yeah. been able to delete quite a few different types of beings from existence oh. very effectively. But these ones, they can't, and they know that. So as yeah. long as those things that they cannot delete from existence remain in existence and do things, as a consequence of that, mm. more hunters are going to become aware of them and start hunting. So the technocracy does the same with hunters as it does with all of those supernaturals. They manage them. And though the top-level idealists in management, <coughs> ironic, may not mm. like it, it's actually kind of useful to have self-funded groups of yeah. Sort of specialisty type people who will hunt down monsters that like become you can't. too loud and threaten consensus. There are no. a few amalgams in the NWO whose job it is to make sure that hunters are utilized as a terra norming tool, basically, to shape consensus in the basically taking out and yes, that erasing the ones that they sure eventually that no want one to believes hunters when they start talking about monsters that is after all the technocracy's highest goal but it yeah. also probably involves actively supporting them with intel every once in a while yeah they'll never know it was why. the new world order who <laughs> uh, tipped them off to that weird fairy creature hunting people in the everglades but the oh, don't worry people will, will hunt get to them through hunt one of the many here. glowy org fronts that they have <laughs> And then the problem will be resolved mm. without the technocracy having to utilize much in the way of resources. Of course, mm. the technocracy will get massively indignant and pissy if any <laughs> hunters ever manage to stumble into a technocracy op. But if push comes to shove, they can always wipe those hunters' memories. They have the fucking device from Men and oh, Women really? to do that. Not to mention, oh keeping an eye on do? society does very much make for an excellent recruiting ground. Because maybe oh. someone in there, or even a whole group of people, is so good at doing their thing that you reckon maybe if you gave them some bigger guns, they you might could be turn able to them do into stuff. extraordinary citizens and <laughs> utilize them against Cthulhu. So Hunter is I mean, if really it works, about it works. all of the marginal spaces in World of Darkness, where the various different supernatural societies intersect. And aside from maybe Mage, it is probably the best system, the best game, if you want to experience as many facets of World of Darkness in yeah, a single I'd be willing to play it. as possible. It's good if you want to feel like you're the good guys for once, even <laughs> though, you know, in practice, that's probably not going to be that simple. And it's great if you it's really that simple, like the supernatural probably the closest to being the good guys. TV show Roadhouse vibe. Because Roadhouse? Exactly five. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> anyway, that is Hunter, which I know is much anticipated, much requested video. Unfortunately, I may not have given you all the answers you were looking for, especially, oh. specifically, okay. uh, a certain show that is very popular on it's YouTube. Okay, a lot of people had very specific questions about that. I don't know what the fuck the blue guy in the blender shop is either. What? Because it's Hunter. 
I mean, definitely. Little guy in the blender the shop. They know every. They had. They have. Ooh, they got it all figured out. They. It's not like they don't need to know either. It's not like mm. their main purpose isn't to create an interesting story that has intriguing mystery elements. Mm. But it is though. It's just that Hunter Society is always very particular to the place that you're playing. In. Oh so yeah. Hunters don't know everything. The real world for real inspiration. Thank you very yeah. much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to your relevant you know what I will do not spam them consider supporting me on patreon or subscribe star buying some of my merchandise or my short story yeah. collection and oh. in that spirit this what? one was ironically the most put pourri of them all even more oh. than me precisely because I had to cover he has a very good voice for so this stuff much ground but so many different types of ground in so many different books and shit. yeah and there's a around, lot of ground to cover with under did you have fun, Fable, at the very least? No. Even with all your complaining? No. It's too much stuff, to be honest. I. We'll eventually I have to do up. the mage one. But we'll do it when a day when Fable's feeling better. Uh -oh. Too late, you no. already signed the contract, Fable. Ah. Uh... You can't. I it's too late, you signed the contract. Anyway, thank you all so much. If you like what we're doing here and want to force us to learn more to it, well, maybe head over no. to the Patreon and support us more over there so that we can, you know, do more of this stuff. But yeah. Uh, consider helping us out. Consider like, following, subscribing, sharing so that you can like all of our stuff. And I'll see you guys later. Say goodbye, Fable. I'm in pain, guys. This is too much for my brain. That's not what I told you to say, but okay. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> anyway, Fable's gonna this go stream. I'm gonna go join him after I get a drink of water because my throat is dry, and I'll see you all later. Bye bye. Be good, people, guys, please. Yes. Make the video games you wanna see in the world or whatever. And we'll check you later.